Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Ye are the salt of the earth, he says, but if the salt have lost its sever, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. We're reading to 16. 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. And then verse 15 says, Neither do men light a candle, take note now, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light not to you, to all that are in the house. The effect of that light is felt within that space. Then it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 we'll read down to 16 philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure 14 it says do all things without murmuring or disputing my verse of emphasis is now 15 and 16. It says that ye may be blameless and harmless sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. It said among whom ye shine as light in the world. Hallelujah. Among whom ye shine as light in the world holding forth the word of light that I may rejoice and so on and so forth. So he lets us know that in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, he mandates us to shine as light. Write this if you care, please. From a standpoint of revival, our mandate is to keep God and his purposes alive across our territories. From a standpoint of revival, our corporate mandate as a people is to keep God and his purpose is alive within a territory. What I mean by keeping God means God consciousness. You may want to add that. We have a responsibility from a standpoint of revival to keep God consciousness alongside the purposes of God alive across our assigned territories. That means it should never be that a believer is present within a territory and then God consciousness dies within that territory and God struggles to penetrate that territory. It should not be. From a standpoint of revival, we have a corporate mandate to do whatever it takes under God to see that the purposes of God are both ignited and preserved within our assigned territories. Are we together? I'll share with us six keys very quickly. Like I said in the morning, by the privilege of God's grace, I am and I remain a student of revival. I have invested my life studying the moves of God across continents, across nations. I have seen God do spectacular things in the lives of people. I've had the honor of gleaning from their wisdom as to what business they did with God that afforded them that opportunity to be mightily used by God and i was able to piece through scripture and through the wisdom of this man six keys that i believe are responsible for igniting and even preserving territorial revivals it is impossible for a territory to be barren of the move of god if these principles are kept can we discuss them a bit number one prayer straight up that is the first key that is responsible for igniting and even preserving territorial revivals. 
prayer particularly the dimension of prayer that captures warfare and intercession like we discussed in the morning every city has gates every city has territorial spirits there are gatekeepers are not just men there are spirits assigned to territories their assignment is to fight everything god men systems and structures and in order of priority these spirits do not look for everyone they will come to everyone but their assignment is those who matter as far as the program of god is concerned they have a singular assignment to thwart everything that is pro kingdom within that territory you would find in scripture that the man we call the madman in gadara that man had the mandate of becoming the evangelist who will save 10 cities so satan seeing that destiny carefully cherry picked that man and bound him in one place when jesus set that man free he single-handedly was responsible for the salvation of a decapolis i told us in the morning satan will seldom attack people randomly he would he would attack people based on his awareness uh, to the degree to which they align to God's purposes that is the degree to which they attract his interest when the devil I told you that the devil has no preset agenda he, he, he his agenda depends on what God is doing with you so he has to wait on God also to know what to do with you when he finds out that God is investing his time his jealousy his presence you become an object of interest automatically prayer is very important there is no territory that will thrive and be able to ignite and even sustain genuine revival fire if we do not preserve the ministry of prayer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint when it was time for when satan was threatened by the prayer ministry of Daniel, Satan went as far as using the parliament to stop prayers for 30 days. You would think something that was weightier would be discussed in the parliament. How would you gather intelligent legislatures only to talk about prayer and say by the decree of the king, only 30 days, don't pray. Afterwards, you can get back. Because one man's prayer was prohibiting the activity of darkness within that territory are we together jesus himself said men ought always to pray and not to faint let me tell you sincerely especially for the times that we live in believers must be alive to prayer strategic prayer with intelligence and understanding hallelujah pastors must pray the bible says watch and pray not just watch and discuss you watch and then you pray number two in fact let me just read for you i wrote two scriptures let me do justice to those scriptures ezekiel 22 let's start our reading from verse 23 ezekiel 22 still on prayer and the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man say unto her thou art the land that is not cleansed nor rained upon in the day of indignation it says there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof like a roaring lion ravening the prey they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made her many widows in the midst thereof 26. it says her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things they have put no difference between holy and profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean they have hid their eyes from my sabbath and i am profaned among them her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain now look at the condition of this territory and her prophets have doubted them with untampered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God when the Lord has not spoken. 
29 the people of the land have used oppression and have exercised robbery they have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully the bible says and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it tragedy but i found none as a result i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have i recompensed upon their head saith the lord there must be men and women positioned to engage the realm of the spirit and to compel men systems and structures to align to the purposes of god are we together this is very very important even jesus for him to safely arrive to the earth he took the ministry of Anna the prophetess. Do you know there were three people that Jesus met and all of them were people given to prayer. Simon of Cyrene, Anna the prophetess, and John the prophet who we call the Baptist. These were the three prophets that played key roles in the life of Jesus and every one of them was given to prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Isaiah 62 Isaiah 62, very popular scripture. Isaiah chapter 62, we we'll begin our reading from verse 1. It says, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Verse 2. It says, And the Gentiles shall see your righteousness and the kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3. It says, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. We're reading to 7, verse 4 now. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land no more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. That means it will be productive. Verse 5. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. And then he says, I have set to this effect. To be able to achieve this that I have set, I have set watchmen upon your walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day or night ye that make mention of the lord he said keep not silence the last verse and give him no rest till he establish until he makes jerusalem a praise in the earth so you would just see jerusalem become a praise and not know that behind it there were men pushing in the spirit he said, I desire to make Jerusalem the praise of the earth, but watchmen, you must pray. I pray that someone will obtain the grace to take your prayer life serious. In the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. Provided you are a man, the Bible mandates that you pray. Key number two. The second key that is responsible for igniting and even preserving territorial revivals, I wrote here, is the regular convergence of believers within that territory. The regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, and empowered. The regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, to be equipped, and to be powered empowered this is the model that we see in the book of acts acts chapter 2 please we begin from 42 the regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped and empowered i submit to you that any territory that does not have platforms where believers can converge for the purpose of training doctrine and growth that territory will never be able to ignite sustainable revival and it will not even be able to preserve it acts 2 and verse 42 the bible says they continued steadfastly 
the key word continued they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers next verse and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles we're reading to 47 the bible says and all that were believed were added together and had all things in common and the bible says they sold their possessions and their goods and parted them to all men and you know as every man had need 46 it says and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart as a result 47 the bible says they praised god and they had favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily such as should be saved there is a serious problem with any territory that does not have living churches and living apostolic and prophetic platforms that make for the growth and the maturity of the believers you may have heard me say this that the greatest need of an unsaved person is salvation an encounter with jesus the son of the living god no matter what you give an unbeliever if it does not translate to saving his soul you did not really bless him give him an estate give him a house give him an opportunity to be educated those things are valuable but in order of divine priority the greatest need of a non-believer is an encounter with jesus the son of the living god the greatest need of a believer who is just saved is transformation and that comes through the sound communication of doctrine the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a communication of a preset body of truth that turns a student to become something exact believers must learn doctrine this is what brings stature and maturity to believers can i tell you when a territory has believers but who are children there is still problem in that territory because an heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all you sh you can random pick believers across a territory and test their spiritual understanding what do they know about prayer what do they know about the word of god what do they know about warfare what do they know about increase that can be a fair assessment of the quality of the spiritual platforms within that territory it is my considered opinion that any believer that is at least five years old in any assembly if that person cannot defend his faith and his spiritual understanding that there is a serious problem with that believer are we together yes i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the maturity of a territory depends on the spiritual maturity of the believers therein are we together it is for this reason that men of god are given jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and i will give you shepherds or pastors according to my heart the bible says they have a singular assignment to feed you meaning they expect you to grow to feed you with knowledge and with understanding if you want to ignite and preserve territorial revivals we must pray that nothing stops the regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training for the purpose of maturity and for the purpose of empowerment number three very quickly the third key that is responsible for igniting and also preserving territorial revivals is an open display of the power of god an open display of the power of god within that territory visible manifestations of miracles signs and wonders can i tell you a territory that does not see the power of god at work will soon forget god 
God uses the display of his power to remind men that he's still there. We need to see the power of God move consistently across our territories. In Acts chapter 4, let's start from verse 12 for sake of time. Acts chapter 4, the Bible tells us um, that Peter went to pray at Gate Beautiful and now seeing this man who had been there, you know, crippled, he prayed for him and then the man began to walk and the news went round town and they called them. So this was a summon as a result of that miracle. He said, he's speaking now, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Next verse, 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Verse 14. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them. I like this. Beholding the man who was healed, beholding the testimony, standing with you. This is a more powerful way of preaching. You preach with the evidence standing with you. Beholding the man which was healed, standing with them. He said they could say nothing against it. When you declare the Lordship of Christ, it's easy for people to contend, but not when your evidence is standing with you. Are we together? Verse 15. But when they had committed themselves to go inside of the council, they conferred among themselves. Next verse. Saying, what shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them. It is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. May that be someone's testimony. Like Pastor Nat sang here, that God will do something in your life. That unbelievers will be the ones carrying the testimony. They said, we don't believe in this God, but he's done something to this man. The gospel that we preach is the gospel of power. And we must not allow our weaknesses and ignorance to extract away the power dimension of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, he said, for it is the power of God. I believe in the power of God. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. When Pastor Nat was just ministering, you can imagine how the atmosphere just changed just with one testimony. Something that happened. Let me tell you this. One genuine testimony. I, I, I was doing a series with our people and I, I began to teach them that God did not intend that preachers would be only men. Testimonies and miracles are also preachers. There is a sermon that the third tree is waiting for and it is not humans that will preach it. Your miracles are also evangelists. There is a kind of sermon that only your results can preach. Your territory is waiting for testimonies. An attestation of the mighty hand, the workings of God. Please do not downplay the place of the power of God. It is very important. Let me tell you this. Why, why do we need our territories to experience the power of God? Number one, it creates conviction. When we see the display of the manifest hand and power of God. It compels everyone to know that there is a God that sits in heaven. Miracles, signs and wonders create conviction. In Acts chapter 19, we begin our reading from verse 11 for time. Acts chapter 19 and verse 11. Please write it down. Igniting and preserving territorial revivals. Point three now. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Amen and amen. I receive it from the depth of my heart. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. Now this 
is evangelism. Are we together? In fact, just leave verse 12. We may not have the time to stretch it down to 17. That you preach with evidence the goodness and the message of God. I have found out that in the presence of overwhelming evidence, you do not need to do too much talking. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he spoke and the rod continued the speaking. He threw the rod and he said, let the rod continue the preaching. He was preaching and the signs were preaching. Where Moses became exhausted, the signs continued. And Pharaoh had the salmon of those signs till he let God's people go. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to someone that as a result of this conference, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may God do something in your life that you will keep testifying for the remaining part of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you read through the Bible, the Bible does not hide the manifestation of miracles from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible, in fact, is so meticulous and sometimes the Bible can annoyingly give details about miracles. And you are wondering, why does God have to be this meticulous? Just say the Red Sea parted. Why give us the details? So that you will know that miracles are messengers. They preach and the territory can hear them. Hallelujah. When God called me to ministry, I prayed and I cried to God. I said, Lord, please do not send me with just a sermon. Let there be the backing of the Spirit, genuine and evidence of your power. Let me tell you, you can compel a territory in one day if their eyes can see. Christianity, the Christian faith, was never designed to just be heard alone. We both hear and see if your Christianity just makes men hear alone you are not complete they should hear and see Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and the Bible says he preached Christ unto them verse 6 let's read together one to read and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Uh -huh. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Please go back to verse 6. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You know, for as long as we keep saying God can do this. God can lift. God will bless. God can change stories. People will get tired of saying amen one day. Are we together? Yes. I have seen what happens to people at the presence of genuine notable miracles. When there is the manifested power of God, it brings convictions. You see that even the most hardened people are broken in the presence of God. An open display of the power of God. When Elijah got tired of the rubbish that was happening in his day, he did not propose a discussion with the king. He said, you know what? Let's go to Carmel. It's as simple as that. This, this, how long shall you stay and be in a straight betwixt? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. He said, now let us have a contest. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. I like that. And he said, I will give you a chance. Call upon your God. Bring in all your skill and I will wait. And the Bible says they started from morning. Now you go and read the various skills they employed to call down fire. The last of it was that they began to lacerate and cut themselves. Oh, bells, hear us. And Elijah said, shout louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And then the Bible says, when it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah was not a fool. He understood the laws of the spirit. When it was the time for the evening sacrifice, he said, get out of my way now. I've given you a chance. He put the wood together, poured water upon it, and called upon 
the God of heaven. Ah! From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be hallowed. For some of you, by reason of this thing, God wants to do something in your life that brings an end to idolatry in your family once and for all. This issue of some people worshipping God and others is because nobody has risen in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Can I tell you, let me challenge ministers of the gospel. Let's not sit back and allow divination to permeate the church and destroy the church as though God were dead. There needs to be an emergence of men of fire and power genuine miracles here and now one genuine testimony that a madman lives around the street of a church and while worship is going on fire from the altar goes to arrest that man and he returns with his sound mind one person who comes into church carrying costs like luggages on his head and with one encounter by the spirit by the next month he returns back dressed in royalty and you tell him what happened and he says I met a God who does not just speak believe me let me tell you this for as long as we do not allow God to pass through us and demonstrate the all surpassing power of this kingdom that we so talk about darkness will continue to rise reinvent itself eat up our children eat up the fabric of society to the point that in many territories they see the church as a nuisance to civilization when they want to do anything serious they bring the church out they say no 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 you we should not come here when we are ready to pray we come but when we are deciding matters you go and read your bible elisha said let no man come so that you will know that there is a prophet in israel Do you know, I was sharing again with our people, and I'm sure ministers of the gospel here will know, there is a sudden reemergence of idolatry in Nigeria. There is a sudden re revisiting. Even people who did not have any, you see all these boys that are doing ritual, what they call it now. Let's not just keep quiet and say, don't make the mistake of Esther. Mordecai said, don't think because you are safe in the palace. You don't do anything about what is happening outside the palace. When you allow evil to continue, the devil brings plan B and plan C and adds to it. But someone in the name of Jesus shout no way. Shout it again. Say no way. It is my prayer that every Sunday and every other day, it does not matter where Satan visits, the experience will be the same fire from this cathedral before he lands here another one is lifting him somewhere let it not look like preachers are just wasting their time on members you preach and cry and pray after 10 years and in one day a herbalist calls someone and he will ignore all your sermons and series because they are looking for results can i tell you do not downplay how far people can go when they really need results They can come and tell lies and say it happened because you pray for me but even you you will know you are not connected to that miracle i hope you like what i'm saying no. the power of god we have no right to tell people don't go to herbalists 
don't go to this when for 50 years the person can bring the evidence that followed his serving satan i served satan for 50 years and they are they maintained the madness of my son they did this one and that one now we are proposing to them the reality of a superior kingdom and they are asking a question we must answer where is the proof of the superiority of this kingdom i sincerely believe in the power of god i do i do this is more than falling down this is we're not talking of falling down and standing up the power to change systems to shift the climate of systems an open display of the power of God that when people are in trouble they begin to rejoice when they see a church signboard because they know that they have finally found refuge from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun your name is to be hallowed ah, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sand, your name is to be hallowed. Hallowed. Hear me. If we are to be honest with ourselves, every family represented in Africa and represented here. There must be somewhere in your family, nuclear or extended, where Satan is trying to take advantage of the absence of the power of God. This is an assignment upon you to go back and say, Hey, hey, we are not revisiting those altars again. Can I tell you? When people become desperate, to see results and we keep giving them explanations a time will come they will put us in a category and know that they cannot have results and get up and go to all kinds of demonic things and satan is more than ready to welcome them this is a charge to not this is not just to ministers of the gospel every believer you must pray and say lord let something from heaven come upon me genuinely it is almost a shameful thing to actually believe that miracles can be stage managed why fake what can be real an open display it is my prayer that for everyone who has come that between now and march may god do something that you will know is a signature he signed upon your life that it will be impossible for anyone to hear it and just sweep it under the carpet and casualize that miracle may it happen for you in the name of jesus please sit down an open display of the power of god are you ready for number four I'm just touching them number one prayer number two regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training maturity number three an open display of the power of God supernatural manifestations of his power over the lives of God's people are you ready for number four how do we ignite and how do we preserve territorial revivals the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 the intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity second timothy 2 and verse 2 this is the fourth key that is responsible for igniting 
and preserving revivals. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, he said the same, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Can I tell you, the moment there is a generation that does not receive that baton, the devil has, he, you, the generation, it does not matter who did well before that time. intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity Hello, no man should leave the earth without reproducing at least twice of you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and you know like this there have been territories where you will have seasons of seasoned veterans of the gospel men and women of god who are with power but sometimes they make mistakes and we see this even with the god's generals respectfully speaking that many of them were focused at giving and pouring and maximizing their destinies and they forgot that one day they would not be there or one day they would not have that strength and the devil knowing that they had already neglected the generations coming he now allowed them knowing that time will naturally fade them away and then the people who should now carry the batons, Satan went and grew with them patiently. So that by the time you turn back now, you can see someone, respectfully speaking, whose father was a foremost evangelist. And you are wondering, where is the mantle in that house? Because they made a mistake. Can I tell you, if you are doing anything great, don't just focus on the moment. You must focus on posterity. This is a mistake. And this does not just, this is beyond just ministry, like fivefold ministry. Even in business. It's why in Africa, we almost do not have third and fourth generation anything. People start things and it dies with them in their lifetime. You travel to the West and you can see, you can see businesses that are 200 years old. 300 years old because they understand the principle of continuity hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us.